Hi, my name is Christy, and this is the American Chinese Food Show, where we analyze vintage menus, recipe books, photographs, and text to tell the story of American Chinese food. A Chinese banquet is an experience unlike anything else. Chinese host banquets, large and small, for celebration of birthdays, the union of two people, end of a year, gathering of companies, groups, and tribes, to ceremonies for family lineage and ancestors. Banquets is yet another deep subject of food in China that we can only scratch the surface of in this channel. I'm going to have a few episodes where each will compare two banquets. First up, two banquets at the same time around 1890, but 7,000 miles apart. What did a Chinese banquet look like a few decades after the first Chinese landed in the United States? Were the Chinese able to recreate what they knew back home, or did they outdo themselves? We can find out from a careful observation in San Francisco by the American historian Hubert Bancroft in the works of Hubert Howe Bancroft, Essays and Miscellany, 1890. When all are seated, the host returns thanks to the guests for their attendance and invites them to partake of the appetizers, which usually consist of cucumbers, pickled duck, eggs, and ginger, salted almonds, melon seeds, celery, and a variety of nuts. Note that this is an observation from Bancroft based on what he knew or was learning on the spot with someone who understood Chinese and English. So there are parts that are difficult to make out. For example, there might be a typo here instead of separate pickled duck and eggs. This is more likely to be just duck eggs, preserved century eggs, and yang ginger that are often served together. The dinner proper now opens with, say, fried shark's fin and grated ham, stewed pigeon with bamboo sprouts, roast sucking pig. Note here there's a typo as well, it's suckling pig, not sucking pig. Boned duck stewed with grated nuts, pearl barley and mushrooms. Fish sinews with ham, stewed chicken with chestnuts and watercress, dried oyster boiled, bamboo soup, sponge omelette and flour cakes, banana fritters, and bird's nest soup, made with minced ham and chicken breast. There are also other dishes which cost up to a dollar a mouthful. A sip of tea concludes the first course. There were at least 12 dishes. Um, there are three stews, one with pigeon, one with duck, one with chicken. Braised dried oysters is a dish we make today for the Lunar New Year along with black moss because it sounds like prosperous in wealth and business in Cantonese. Fish sinew maybe is fish maw. I'm not sure what sponge omelette flower cakes are but maybe just for y'all. After the first course, the company retires to the ante room for half an hour to chat, smoke and gather inspiration from the symbol clash. The second course opens with tea and liquor, followed by lichens, terrapin shells, flavoured with onion and seasoned with water chestnuts, mushrooms with 100 layer leek, Chinese quail, brochettes of chicken hearts, more shark fins, fungus, nuts and minced pies, rice soup stewed mutton, roast, duck, pickled cucumber, and so on. I have a harder time understanding what's really going on with the second course. Um, lichen can be made into food, but it's not really Cantonese and not quite appropriate for banquets. After the second course, there is an exchange of complimentary speeches. The dessert presents an equally long series of fancy dishes of rather delicate cakes and nuts of all kinds and in the form of birds and or flowers, water lily seed, jelly of seaweed, oranges apparently fresh but filled with a series of jelly layers of, of different colours, the whole concluding with a variety of fruit and the tea. If you're interested to learn more about tea and tea snacks, check out our episode on Port Arthur. What did banquets look like around the same time in South and China? Interestingly, the most documentation I could find is from the red light district in Hong Kong at the turn of the last century. The location was first at Possession Point in Shen Wan in the Hong Kong island. And in 1906, after a huge fire, the British government forced the entire business to move to Belcher Point further west as a clever plan to develop an unused land. At its peak, there were over 40 restaurants, a couple hundred brothels, and over 2,000 prostitutes. 
So how is this related to banquets? Well, in order to meet the prostitutes, you have to pay the restaurant to buy quote unquote a flower letter that lists out your name, the name of the brothel and prostitute you want and where they should go to meet you as you host a banquet. The restaurants and brothels depended on each other. On top of prostitutes, there were other entertainments at the restaurants like Chinese opera, music ensemble, mahjong and other games. It's definitely not for regular folks. One table at the restaurant fits about 8 to 10 people, uh, costs around one month of salary for a laborer. But when you add the extra and tips for all the entertainment, it easily goes up to one year of salary. We can learn more from the book Hong Kong Anecdotes, written by Wang Yinting, the founder of the first night newspaper in Hong Kong in 1921. This is also a personal account, just like Bancroft's. The difference is the author was a child at these banquets, and his uncle was one of the investors of the restaurant Hang Fa Lo. Yes, the one we had in San Francisco was likely named after the one that was actually established in 1846 in Hong Kong. There usually is an invitation to the banquet. You're supposed to arrive around 4 p.m. Guests start their mahjong games around 6 as they smoke the opium, which was legal then. Dinner will start at 11 p.m. There are two snacks and two fruits. So Indian almonds and watermelon seeds for the snacks and pomelos and pre-peeled oranges for the fruits. You know, because rich people don't peel oranges themselves. Starting banquets with seeds has been and is still pretty common in banquets today. Then you have four cold and four hot as appetizers. The four cold dishes are preserved century eggs and ginger. Our first dish that is exactly the same as Bancroft wrote for his in San Francisco. Sour spare ribs, cucumber, jellyfish skin and dry shrimp with vinegar. This is a dish that you really can no longer find anywhere. And sour fowl organs like hearts. All four dishes are sour with a bit of sweetness in it and they all look red. Four hot dishes are usually chicken and duck, pigeon eggs and fresh and dried kidneys. Then you finally get to the entrees. There we have eight big and eight small. The guests get one big dish, then one small, then one big and so on. The, the big dishes include abalone, sea cucumber, shark's fin and, the, and fish maw, basically the four basics. Whole duck, shiitake mushroom, chicken two styles, usually soft boiled and soy sauce poached. Um, the small dishes include a dish called money chicken. It's uh, chicken liver and fatty pork skewered together to make like almost like a pate cha siu. Uh, you can still get it if you go to old school restaurants in Hong Kong today. Uh, grouper, shrimps, bird's nest and so on. So after a total of 28 things, uh, this is when guests get to take a break with some tea and then more food like buns and small cakes. At the very end of the meal, you have choy sum with either fermented red bean curd uh, sauce or salted duck eggs with a small bowl of white rice of corn or congee. Or in case you're, you're not full enough, I guess. Uh, the banquets usually end around at the earliest 3 o'clock in the morning. Um, if you compare the Bancroft San Francisco banquet and the Hong Kong red light district upscale banquet around the same time before, right, right before 1900, um, you see a lot of similarities in the mix of food and entertainment, the duration of the banquet, um, the amount of dishes, as well as a few specific dishes from, the, from appetizers to the entrees, like chicken hearts, mushrooms and fowls. The main difference would likely be how the meal ends. The guests in Hong Kong were probably a little bit too busy to get to the next activity at the brothels um, to engage in an elaborate round of desserts like Bancroft described. Um, and fruits were served at the end of the meal in San Francisco, much like how it's done today in China and Hong Kong. By the way, the restaurant Bancroft was at was probably either Hang Fa Lo, uh, Wisin Lo or Bunsen Lo, the major upscale Chinese restaurants in San Francisco Chinatown before 1900. Like the photo we have here by I.W. Tabor, captioned 
the Yin Yi Kong So Society invited the supervisors of San Francisco and the lady friends to a banquet in the Hang Fa Lo restaurant. It's pretty amazing the banquets in San Francisco were no less sumptuous than the best ones in Hong Kong. Unfortunately, we don't have banquets that last for 10 hours anymore. Uh, maybe it's actually for the best. <laughs> I don't know. I hope this episode gives you a chance to reminisce about bygone days. It sure did for me. If you like our content, subscribe to our channel. See you soon.